Hi everyone, it's Sadie, it's Sadie School for Dogs. Um, I've just finished a puppy class and I wanted to just make a really quick video to talk to you all about um, stress and something called trigger stacking, which is something I've been thinking a lot about recently. Um, so we tend to think of stress as um, a feeling or an emotion and it's very, very difficult to measure or quantify um, an emotion or a feeling. So it's difficult to assess it in our dogs and difficult to visualize. Um, how I tend to think about stress is that the physiological effects of what's happening to our dogs when they experience stress. So when I say stress, I mean anything that creates a response that is um, fight or flight, so anything that makes them respond as if they, they have to react to a threat to their survival, um, and also anything that gets them ready to, to go, um, they're excited about something, um, that also creates the same physiological response, which is a rise in the hormones cortisol and adrenaline. These hormones can rise pretty quickly and can actually take up to 72 hours to go down to a normal level. Um, so to kind of illustrate this, um, I have this beaker here. Okay, so I've got this beaker here, which um, the, the beaker represents an average day um, for your dog. And the liquid that I'm about to pour in represents any kind of um, event um, that will cause your dog some sort of stress, whether that's you know distress or you stress, whether they're anxious or excited. Um, and then the stickers just on the front here, we've got stress yawn, a growl, a snap, and a bite. They represent the escalating signals that a dog will give, the communication or body language that you'll see um, as a result of stress. So say for example, you started your day out by taking your dog to the park um, and throwing a frisbee. Now, if your dog's anything like mine, frisbee is the most exciting thing in the world. That's gotta be about there. Um, and then on the way out of the park, you pop the lead on and round the corner comes a dog who has um, had a bit of a scuffle with them in the past. They feel threatened, they respond, um, barking and lunging because they feel this dog is a threat to their life. That's quite a lot of stress. Okay, now on the way home, it's a hot day, hot heat, that's a big one. Um, you decide to stop at a cafe, um, you're having a coffee with your friend, your dog's lying by your side, but there's some, there's some drilling noise in uh, maybe on the next street that your dog can hear. And then without you noticing, maybe they, uh, they have some toothache that you're not aware of. Dogs aren't very good at telling us when they're in pain and uh, a toddler comes over and grabs your dog's face. Okay. Now this can happen to any dog of any breed and any age, regardless of how tolerant you think they are of how, or how they've behaved in the past. Every single dog has a point at which they can snap. So while I'm not suggesting that you go around taking swabs of your dog's saliva and checking for the cortisol levels every half an hour, what you can do is just be aware of your dog's body language, um, monitor how they're feeling and just manage their surroundings so you're limiting stress and you're limiting um, the possibility that they might one day bite.